What's up, Younger fans? I'm Taylor Strecker, and my living room is the place to be every week for an inside look at the latest episode of Younger. It's your Getting Younger After Show. In tonight's episode, things blew up in Liza's face, the boss's wife blew up Maggie's phone, and Josh and KT just blew it. Here to rehash all the drama with me is Nico Tortorella. Darling, hello. Hello, Linda. Welcome to the show, baby. Thanks for having me again. I know. Thanks for being here again. Okay. First things first, where are you? What is going on? Fill me in, please. Okay. I am currently in Richmond, Virginia, um, starting season two of The Walking Dead World Beyond. I wrapped Younger a week ago today, um, the day that we're filming this episode, not the day that this episode comes out, get with the program audience. But... It was very emotional to say the least. And I don't want to say anything more about it because I don't want to give anything away, but I'm done y'all. That's a wrap. Younger, seven seasons. Ugh. How was wrapping the show? Where are you emotionally speaking? I mean, I, it's hard to really place. The only thing um, that I can even relate it to, I mean, I've like died on shows before, I've had shows that have been canceled. I've never been on a show for seven seasons. This is a first. The only thing that I can relate it to is when I was growing up, I was in a play for like four or five years, the same play. And the last performance um, was, I was, I could barely get a line out, you know, like it was, it was a lot. And that's the only thing that I can relate it to. It feels like the end of an era. Um, but also not the end. I have a feeling there's going to be something else that happens. Excuse me, baking powder. What are you saying to her? Please tell I, me. I, I'm just saying no one can afford to kill something that's not dead these days. You know what I mean? I hear that so hard and I am here for that. You hear okay. me, Viacom? Keep it, keep it rolling. I mean, we all would die for that. So, okay, your mouth to Viacom God ears. How about that? God ears. <laughs> okay, so let's get into tonight's episode, Nico. Let's start with Josh and KT. He finally introduces Gemma to her, and it turns out to be a deal breaker. Hmm. Um, I think that Josh realizes a little late that maybe he should have been up front with KT from the get-go. He wasn't. How do you think that Josh's relationship with Liza has influenced his relationship with honesty? Ooh, great question. I mean, I feel like we're skipping over the, uh, the, the kink. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. We're going to get to that. Oh, oh, I would never jump over that. I so live for that. Important. Like that we're going to Liza first and then kink. I appreciate Taylor and I see you. Um, I think that Josh has a troubled relationship with relationships in general. I think that he has spent a long time putting a lot of himself into another person. And um, Liza is always underneath all of it. Um, I don't think that he really expected anything long-term with KT from the top. I think he really likes her. I think sex is probably really good. Yeah. Um, you know, he also like hasn't really dated since Gemma. So he doesn't really understand how to navigate that. Um, and no one teaches you these things, right? You just kind of have to figure it out as you go along. How do you think the Josh we see now in season seven is different from who he was back in the first season? Well, he's like bigger and older and has more facial hair. <laughs> um, he is a father. He's a parent. Right. Um, to not just Gemma. Like I, I am in the process of family planning myself and I have, I have noticed a, I, I know I'm so excited. Oh my God. Don't get me started. Cause that's a whole other conversation, but I have already felt this like energetic shift in, oh, I'm an adult now, like my priorities are different. And it's not just for my children or my future children, it's for everything around me. And that, finally in doing it in my own life, am I able to recognize that 
is what happened to Josh. Um, you, you get older. Yep. And just priorities change and they shift and perspectives do too. Totally. Ooh, old babies. I know, I know. I know, we've got baby fever in this house too. Uh, I mean, it's real. It's right? Real. I mean, quarantine was luck. It was going to go one or two directions, right? <laughs> one of two directions. The, the, the baby is what we chose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. Let's talk about the kink now. I'm ready. So, speaking of babies. Speaking, speaking of, babies. of babies. So, the scene in the episode where KT surprises Josh and poor little Gemma by putting on a diaper and acting like she's a sexy baby. What was that day like on set? <laughs> Ridiculous. When I read the script, I, I mean, look, we've had our fair share of uh, experiences on this show. Yes. And, it was like, oh, all right, here we go. Like, game time. Um, Alma, the actor that plays KT, was, like, so great with the whole experience. Like, in a full diaper, um, still looking hot as huh. Yeah. Me. Um, but just, it was, it was a quick little moment, right? Like, I'm more interested in what happened after that scene. <laughs> To be honest with you, like Josh, like turns back and he's like, "See Gemma." Oh, like I feel like there could still be room to be like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. <laughs> let's just let's figure this out for a second. I got fifteen minutes." Right. <laughs> After I saw that, I was like, "I kind of want to try it. I think I'm, I kind of look like a baby when I'm naked." <laughs> you know, there was definitely a conversation with certain cast members about that fetish and that kink. And, you know, me being the open, accepting person that I am, had to explain it to a few other people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, when I saw it, I mean, the writers always go there on Younger, but this was like, took the cake in the best way humanly possible. I really. Yeah. And hey, to all y'all that are into it, I see you. Do you. There is no shaming here. Like, mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, nope. it's, it's, it's legal wherever you are. We're good. Yeah, you do yeah. you, boo boo. You do <laughs> you. <laughs> okay, so obviously this was a massive uh, backfire of a surprise. Have you ever been part of a surprise that backfired in real life? I don't like surprises. I am not a fan of surprises in general. Yep. Um, have I been part of a massive surprise that's backfired? I mean, I'm sure. <laughs> I am sure I have. But I, I mean, there's got to be a reason. There's got to be some trauma way back when that like actually makes me hate surprises. I don't want to know secrets. I want to. I don't want to know surprises. I, I. I don't want any surprises for me. I want everything on the table. So <laughs> there's some trauma there. I probably got to go to a the therapist to figure it out because nothing can come as we're having this conversation. I'll give you mine. I love my therapist, literally my best friend. Okay, cool. okay. <laughs> so while Josh and KT are doing, let's say their thing, whatever they were doing, Lauren was helping Maggie get through dinner with her new boss and her one night stand who turned out to be the boss's wife, which was just, just epic. Yeah. Debbie and Molly are so hysterical in this scene. What do you enjoy about working with each of them? I mean, two of them are powerhouses Ugh. individually and together, right? Like there have been a few scenes this season where we're all together. First of all, do you remember when Josh had friends that weren't these four women? Like <laughs> I do. <laughs> we don't get any of that this year. Josh is like only friends with them. And I love it. I mean, working with Deb, who is such a fucking icon, right? Um, and who is also like a family member to me. Like I actually consider her a family member. And then Molly to, to go back seven years and to remember the person that she was when we started this to who she is now. I know. And Molly Bernard single-handedly carried season seven on her motherfucking back. Okay. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> she deserves all the credit for this season. Um, she's in, she clicked, you know? She is fully present. I love that. Yeah. 
just, I mean, unbelievable. unbelievable. Both of them. And all and all of you guys together, your chemistry, it's just, it's next level. I mean, it really, however you slice it or dice it or pair you guys up, it's just magic. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's very special. Well, and to be able to like come back to it post 2020, right? Like right. to have that security blanket. Um, I mean, I'm about to start a show where I know the people, but we only did one season together. Like the thought of going and doing a brand new sh series or a new project in the midst of all of this, uh, the point of it is thank God that we have each other in this crazy time. And you're included in that, Taylor. Nico, you guys, I have to say, I mean, I, when I talk about getting to do the show with you guys, I always say the cast literally treats me like I'm one of them. I'm not worthy. You guys are just beyond wonderful. This is so special. And that's the common theme from my experience through working with you guys and talking to the writers is that like this show, Younger, is very special. The way it clicks together for the audience as well as for the people who are making the show possible. I mean, it's just, it doesn't really, um, does it set the bar like so high for future projects? I was just, I'm, first of all, I'm getting emotional. Second of all, cry. I was having, just having this conversation with Darren. Darren came to um, set on my last scene, right? And we had dinner afterwards. And I was just like, Darren, like you fucked me. Like, I, <laughs> first of all, I love you so much. And I'm so grateful no words will ever be able to describe how much I appreciate what you have given me. But you fuck me. Like, how am I ever going to go on to another project at this point? Like, knowing how good it can be, right? And I think Sutton Foster really set that bar as number one. It all trickled down from her. And it's, it's just a half hour rom-com where we all like each other and there really is no ego on set anywhere. It... I can't think of anything more enjoyable is the word. Like if, if younger is the most fun, easiest job, it doesn't even really feel like a job I've ever had in my life. Like on the opposite end of the spectrum, the walking dead, which I'm doing right now, which is like hour long intense stunt, like outside covered in blood and zombie all the fucking time. It's like, it's real work. And like none of that, ever happen on Younger. So in this episode, uh, you know, the dinner is, we'll say a little awkward. Um, what's your strategy for handling potentially awkward social situations? Yeah, I, I'm, hmm. Just like to be dumb, to be honest with you. Like I <laughs> can like, like get real sassy real quick. <laughs> and like, be be stupid and that usually just like levels the playing field for everybody you know you like there's a lot of yes just this just a lot of fingers you know what i mean just we get this going and we're good <laughs> we just when we're scared we just do this slap <laughs> our non-existing long fingernails to our hands <laughs> <laughs> I know it's my fingernails. I bet yours are better than mine right now. <laughs> True story. <laughs> um, <laughs> so in this episode, Josh, unlike Lauren, is actually helpful when he lets Liza and Kelsey host their writer's salon at Inkberg. Yeah. Um, between taking both Kelsey and Lauren in as roommates and being willing to do pretty much anything for Liza, um, mm -hmm. Josh is like basically the nicest guy in the world. Do we agree with this statement or? I mean, for sure. I think Josh is an incredible human being. Um, I mean, I think that there are probably some rules and regulations around hosting public drinking events in a tattoo shop, but we don't need to focus on that, right? Like, yeah, yeah, that's neither television. here nor there. Suspend your disbelief. Um, but no, Josh shows up. Josh's entire life orbits around Gemma first, right? And this little family that they have um, that includes Kelsey and Lauren and Liza and Maggie. Like yeah. those are his people. Um, and I really believe that he would do absolutely anything for any of them. And do you think that when we first started the show, that 
was who Josh was as well, or has it grown over the seasons? I think it, it, it's it's definitely grown over the seasons. I, Josh didn't know who any of these women were at the top yeah. of the the show, right? Josh was like living in his own little Brooklyn hipster tattoo bubble. Um, and then Liza came on and rocked everything. Um, and that's how he met all of these in, incredible women. I think probably Josh was, was raised by uh, a group of powerhouse like Southern women, you know? For sure. And um, he's like created that little family today. Okay, this is a very serious question. Uh -oh. Is there anything on the Inkberg set that really stands out to you? Like something maybe you want to take as a souvenir when production is over? I've already taken things. <laughs> what did you take? <laughs> um, there's an alligator head that's been in Inkberg since the beginning. It's gone now. <laughs> there was a piece of amethyst that is gone now. Um, there uh uh there was this little like it was it's like there was a little bat that was a real bat in this like piece of like epoxy it was like a like in a, a little epoxy tile that had a real once alive bat damn gone now gone gone, gone. gone. <laughs> gone. The weird shit. I don't know why I like weird shit. Oh God, you deserve to take that stuff. <laughs> I mean, it was like, that was my tattoo shop, you know? And it's Hello. Like, oh, there's, a, there's always another alligator. There's always another bat. There's always another crystal. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love you. Oh, that means we have a visitor. Guess mm -hmm. what? It's the writer of tonight's episode, Sarah Choi. Welcome to Getting Younger. Woo! Hello. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. This episode was next level. I mean, really, we've got a lot to get into. So, Quinn sets Liza up to think that she's using Charles, essentially, basically to just see if Liza's going to tattletale, um, like WTF Quinn, but typical Quinn. Um, how do you write Quinn so that even when she's being terrible, we still somehow like her? I think that I just write her terrible and hope that Laura Benanti will do magic. <laughs> that really works. Like... <laughs> Yeah, she's just, in my head, she's just this eccentric billionaire. And I'm like, what would an eccentric billionaire do? I don't know. I've never met one. So I just make it up and she really runs with it. Oh, man. Um, I have to ask you, Nico, what is your, like, vibe on Quinn as the character? Not Laura. Obviously, she's delightful. I mean, evil is, like, the first word that comes to mind. I mean, granted, I've never... I've never worked with her, right? As a, as like, we've never had a scene together. Yes. Um, but I know that person. Yeah, really, you know I, Quinn. I know a few eccentric billionaires. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> okay, smart, smart, smart. <laughs> She's okay. the world. She needs to keep herself entertained somehow. Yeah. I know, right? Seriously. Also, Charles' reaction to tell Liza to stay out of his personal life is like literally dagger to the heart. What's your perspective on Charles' headspace when it comes to Liza, like literally right now? I think that because it's kind of midway through the season and they've been broken up for a couple of episodes now, they keep doing this dance around their relationship and he's like, enough is enough. Like I'm with this other woman now. And if you keep interfering in my life, I'm not going to be able to recover. So I think it's like a, from a personal standpoint for him. Self-preservation. Self-preservation, exactly. Am I allowed to be a little mad at Charles right now as an audience member or am I supposed to be like seeing his perspective? Um, I'm well, you not a little mad. I'm like, come on. <laughs> Liza never asked for any of this. 
<laughs> Nico, I feel like you want to chime in on that question. You, <laughs> Josh. As a like, as a fan, not having anything to do with Josh, like, when are you not a little bit mad at Charles? <laughs> We love you, Peter. <laughs> we love you, Peter Herman. This has nothing to do with you. <laughs> he gets very sensitive about Charles. I know, I know. No, we're joking. <laughs> um, wait, okay. Sarah, I have a question for you. I want to talk some about KT and just like how this even came up. Oh, and yeah. This Please. From? Because also, Sarah, I know from talking to you guys over the years that sometimes you pull from your real lives to write the show. So like, where the hell did that idea for that baby scene come from? I mean, it would, it would be amazing if that came out of my real life, but <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> or did it? I don't know. Um, so when we wrote it, we wrote it like before COVID. So it was a thousand years ago. And <laughs> I think we were talking about like the very the very real emotional way of Josh finally telling KT that mm -hmm. he's a dad and somebody joked and I, I'm gonna say it was Darren. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it just feels like a Darren joke that he just walks in and sees her wearing two diapers stitched together. And we all laugh so hard, but like, to me, I was like, <laughs> that's just a joke pitch, but it <laughs> happened for real. So. It happened for real, for real. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, I'm like, I think this is a very romantic ending for them. Like, if you look at it from her perspective, like, she thought that that's what he wanted, and she was meeting him there. Like, wipe her up. I don't, like, she's great. <laughs> great, yes. She's too busy for Josh, let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. She'll, take, she'll keep the diaper, but... She won't. Yeah, she, oh, she definitely kept the diaper. Yeah, definitely kept the diaper. A hundred percent. You see that in the scene post, right? When they're walking with Gemma and they're goodbye. It's 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 sweet. It's mutual. Like they they see each other, they recognize each other, they appreciate each other. That's how relationships should end if they do. Yeah. yeah. I love that yeah. it was just like full of love and yeah. And also their relationship was pretty short lived. So to have that kind of mutual respect, you know, and yeah. communication right. and then part ways with absolute love for one another. I mean, it's very adult. It was a very yeah. adult moment with so much babiness around it all. I really yeah. feel like it was, it's, it was incredibly mature. Like her decision to just put that diaper on and go right on into the kink if that's what Josh wants, you know? And then, I mean, I have to say, respect all the ways up and down, really. It, you know, it, it was it was really the love making, you know, it wasn't just sex. It was <laughs> love making. I gotta go. <laughs> People say that to me a lot. Okay, so now Nico, it's your turn to ask a younger writer anything you wanna know. Oh, so ask so Sarah funny. one question. No. Um, okay, one question. Mm -hmm. One question. Sarah. Mm -hmm. On Josh's business cards in Inkberg, <laughs> they just say Josh. <laughs> Josh with a phone. I knew you were going to ask me this question. <laughs> it, it, I, it runs so deep. Even the fucking business card just says Josh. Like seven seasons now. If you were to give Josh a last name, what would it be? Um, this is such a hard question. I feel like it starts with a. I feel like it starts with an A. Maybe because like there was one scene where you were carrying a letter and some and the props department asked me what the last name was and I was like, "You're just gonna have to have him cover the last name with his thumb because we don't." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I think it's Star. <laughs> Oh my God, that is so funny. We had this conversation on set and we decided it was Duff. Duff, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually, um, this exists in the future and this, Josh is Hillary's third child. Uh, <laughs> child that she's hiding with an iPad all season when she's- Currently, there. currently, that is Josh, yeah. <laughs> Ask as a fan of the show, and as somebody who's worked with you guys for years, why no last name for Josh? I don't. I mean, 
I think we just wanted to keep the mystery alive. Like Madonna. I don't I was going to say. Taylor, I mean, literally in the scripts, everyone has full names and then it just says Josh. <laughs> At a certain point, it had too much time had passed and then it became a bit. So that's right. true. I, I thought we were going to get it at the end of the series. I well, thought we talked we about that it. last year. Didn't Honestly, we talk about that last year? I forgot. I think we forgot. <laughs> well, well, I mean, like the Mr. Big moment, right? Like we got that in Sex and the City. But how are you going to follow seven seasons of No Last Name and give a lot? Unless it's literally death. There's nothing that's, <laughs> <there's nothing> that's going <laughs> to live up to it. <laughs> Oh, we'll save it for the movie. Save it for the movie. Save it for the movie. Yes, we're pushing that agenda very hard today, and I'm here for it. <laughs> oh, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for writing. I mean, what a gift this episode was. So, thank you. Thank you guys for watching and being thank in you, it and doing all this, and I love you guys. Bye, girl. Good to see you. Um, I have to ask you, Nico, does it hurt your feelings that Josh doesn't have a last name? Oh, girl, compared to Madonna and Cher, we're good. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> okay, so during this final season of Younger, we're spending some time in each episode of Getting Younger to take a look back into some memorable moments of the show. Mm. Tonight, we saw Josh drop a baby bombshell on KT, who had no idea about Gemma. So let's revisit the fateful moment in season one when Liza finally dropped her big secret on Josh. Mm. Hey, I mean it. You do? Yeah. I mean, you, you're smart, and you're beautiful, and I love how you're just game for anything. I love how I feel when I'm around you. I love you. I love you. I love you, I love you. I love you too, Josh. That's why I have to tell you this. I'm a 40-year-old mom from New Jersey. <laughs> I totally know how you feel. Sometimes I feel like I'm a 90-year-old fisherman no, in Japan. No, I mean it. I mean it. I'm not in my 20s. I really am 40. What do you remember about shooting that scene? Let's not forget we're high on ecstasy in that scene. Oh, I did not. You're rolling balls rolling in that scene. Balls. <laughs> and I was still drinking in season one, so I may have showed up a little bit hungover that day. Um, I, I was like, I got to be high on ecstasy all day, so I might as well just be a little bit hungover. right? Yeah, punchy. Yeah. Um, and... Oh my God, I'm a 40 year old mom from New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> and then Josh's reaction, oh so God. earnest, like, I oh feel God. you, man, me too. First of all, we are children, we are babies. I was gonna say, hello, baby. Talk about babies. Oh my oh God. Oh my God. The funny part is now I live in New Jersey and like, I'm almost 40. <laughs> so Same. It's so stop saying our age. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, we are turning into the show IRL. Holy. <laughs> if you had to pick a favorite Josh and Liza moment from all of the seasons, what would it be and why? Hmm. I mean, Sutton and I were just talking about this the other day. I, I always go back to that New Jersey episode, um, two two moments in Jersey. One when they go to Liza's friend's house and they get stoned together. Yep. And that night they have a conversation about their experience there, and Josh really like opens up to Liza. Um, and when Liza went to that book club, and Josh just sat in the car and waited for her, like. Ugh. They've had some pretty intense fights over the year too, you know? Yeah. Um, 
like as an actor, those had been some of my favorite scenes to shoot just because Sud and I have been so invested in this relationship for so long that like when we get to play, it's it's intense. And I'm like a sensation junkie at the end of the day. And when I can like feel all of those things, it's my favorite days. Okay, are you ready for a little game, if you Let's will? Play Let's play okay. game. It's a segment, but I like to call it a game. It's called Show Us Your Stuff. Mm. So since we're all up in your space right now, can you show us something that you have with you that's meaningful to you? And yes. can you tell us about it? Well, I'm just gonna preface this isn't my space. I thought I, so, I this figured. Is a, this is a, a, a rented space um, that everything was here when I got here, but I do have something with me. Okay. That actually I acquired the second season of Younger. <gasps> Um, sure. and she's probably been on this show maybe before, but this is Sun. Hello, Sun. She's a little sleepy right now. Oh my uh, God. But true story, uh, a fan on Instagram. Stop. Gave me this dog. No, I don't know anything about Sun. Well, I woke up one morning in Brooklyn and I had a DM saying, hey, I have this dog. I, every time I wake up in the morning, I see your face when I look at this dog's face. Stop, stop. I think I have your soul dog. This bitch knew exactly what to say to me to get this dog off her hands. I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's my soul dog. Meet me in the park in 20 minutes. <laughs> Wait, was this person a fan of Younger? Fully, like shaking when we met. Like, it was so sweet. Oh, um, oh. But I was just like, oh my God. And we have we have a Chihuahua. Oh I wasn't God. even married at this point, to be honest with you. Bethany has a Chihuahua that yeah. is the same coloring that's like 10 pounds. And, they, and his name is Papa. So when we got this little lady, we wanted to name her son, like Papa and son, but oh. it's spelled S-U-N, but you know, son's non-binary. It's like- Yes, the <laughs> totally. Wait, how many pounds is son? Two. Oh yes, that's what I'm talking about. She was on the I... back porch last night. I took her out to go to the bathroom and there was this cat that came into the area and was like, he like put his head through the fence and I was like, don't you even fucking think about it. The cat was three times the size. I believe it. Oh my God. That this dog is, is so she's, precious. She's six years old. She's going to get. Oh my God. She's perfect. Okay. Well now I want a baby and a dog. So thank you very much, Nico. I'm not so much. No problem. You know what? You can keep your, your special something in the frame if you want to for the rest of the episode. Okay, oh I'm my gonna, gosh. I'm gonna keep her. <laughs> yeah, keep son. Keep her. Keep her there. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't even focus on doing my job right now. <laughs> I, do, I, I do have to say she looks a lot sweeter than she is. If you tried to come into this house right now, you would not be welcome. Chihuahuas are very protective. They and and they're actually. I heard that they really only like one owner, particularly. I mean, I'm the one. <laughs> they love us both, um, but I just fully non-binary gendered son. No, they love us both. <laughs> <laughs> we have, we have a happy family. Everyone gets along. Oh my gosh, cutie patootie. I'm literally dying. Okay, Nico, before I let you go, I have one more question. Yes. What one word would you use to describe what's on the horizon for Josh this season, the mm. final season? I'm just gonna say up, 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 up. We're going up. Things are moving okay. up. Nothing can stop okay. me on the way up. <laughs> Nico, I adore you. Love you so much. Thank you, doll. Love you too. Mwah. Uh, and of course, love and thanks to everybody watching. I'm Taylor Strecker, and this is Getting Younger. Join me again right here after next week's episode for more behind the scenes stories and insights from the cast. Until then, here's a sneak peek of what's coming up. <laughs>
Action guns, gear left. No, 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 oh, the other shit. left, the other left. Oh, so, so, doesn't the gallery have people who can do this for you? You know, people with a U-Haul and upper body strength? Hey, speak for yourself. And have those sweaty palms men handle everything in my art show? Yes. Hey, Max, say my art show again. My art show. <laughs> oh, crap. Another one. Oh, my titties. I mean, her titties. Whoa, 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 will you stop saying titties, please? I don't know if I can. Who's texting you titties? Nudes. Camila, the jeans wife. I thought you threw her off the set with Lauren. I tried, but then she invited me to Provincetown. Oh, and these, I mean, how do I respond to these? I don't want to heart them. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Do a thumbs up? I mean, they're good boobs. I don't want to make her feel bad about her boobs. No, no, you definitely don't want that. Well, that's the problem with nudes. You're forced to affirm them. Forced? Wow, I don't recall you ever complaining. Well, I didn't want to make you feel bad. Oh. But there's only so many winky tongue out faces and hot flame emojis you can reply with. It's exhausting. Exhausting. Oh, here comes the bush. Oh! Uh oh. Where there's boob, there's bush. Just saying.